everyone. Today is Holy Thursday, and so we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And it's we're very, it's very sad. It's extremely um, difficult that we can't be together uh, for this Mass today. Um, we're going to do a little bit of singing in Latin today, uh, so get ready. Um, you'll probably recognize the Ubi Caritas. Ubi caritas est vera, Deus ibi est. So let, let's let's practice that a little bit, okay? So, ubi caritas est vera, Deus ibi est. Let's sing. charity, God is present. True charity. There's a version of this Ubi Caritas that is a little, actually a little later, but it's more famous. It's the Ubi Caritas et Amor, Deus ibi est. Where there is charity and love, God is present. But this version, an earlier version, is Ubi Caritas est vera. It's where there is true charity, where, th where there is charity that is true, est vera. We talk about amor, right? That's a certain type of love, romantic love. We have brotherly love as well. But caritas uh, means charity. It, it, it's, um, it's like what Father Pepley often talks about. The Greek word for it is agape. Uh, it's self-sacrificing love. So there's many words for love in Latin and Greek, and the one that is in this chant, ubi caritas est vera, the true charity, that's the self-giving love. It's the way that God loves us. And the other types of love are good, but only insofar as they point towards God. And so I really like this version of the chant. God is love, we say that, right? Saying that God loves kind of doesn't encapsulate it. Um, it's just like the way that we don't say that God created. We do say that. Um, it's not just that God created in the creation story and now he's done creating. He set everything loose. No. God is constantly creating and recreating and renewing because that's who he is. It's not just, it's not just one of the actions that he does. It's who he is, creation, creating. Same thing for love. It's who he is, love with a capital L. And so God doesn't sometimes love us, sometimes not. He chooses who to love. No, he loves all because God is love. And so this is so other from us. It's so odd to us. I mean, we're, we're fallen, and we, we do choose not to love very often. You know? And so it's, it's foreign to us, this idea. Um, like Peter in the Gospel who says, you will never wash my feet, Lord. You know, we also refuse love coming from God. You know, he, he's ready to wash our feet, our hands. He's ready to wash us clean. And we, and we say, oh, no, 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 I, I, don't, want, I don't want you to, um, to see parts of me that I don't like. Right? So, no, 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 thanks, God. You will not wash my feet. Um, and we also deny him. Peter denied him three times only pretty good. We deny him many more than that, right? And in, in the first reading, we see a different side of this. We see the side that God requires sacrifice, requires us to give of ourselves, open ourselves to being washed, like, like Peter, right? 
And so in the first reading we see that um, the Israelites were, were told by God to put the blood of a lamb on the doorposts and lintel of their house. Um, and no destructive blow will come upon you, is what the scripture says. No destructive blow. Not because God decides to be nice. Um, I'm feeling nice today. No, no destructive blow because of the sacrifice, the self-sacrifice, the giving of that sacrificial lamb. Well, he's asking us to give of us, right? And put and sacrifice of ourselves. Because sacrificing of self is love, caritas. And in the, in the second reading, it gets clarified even more because we see that uh, um, Jesus calls his, the cup of his blood the new covenant. This second reading is really amazing because it's the first written record that we know of of the Last Supper. There were many spoken oral records, and those became written down in the Gospels. But this letter from St. Paul is the oldest written record that we have. And he quotes Jesus saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in memory of me, in remembrance of me. He tells us to drink blood of a new covenant, right? The old covenant with Moses, the doorpost and the lintel of the lamb, but now Jesus is the new lamb and the new covenant, and it's his blood that we should, that we should um, sacrifice, right? Jesus, is, Jesus, throughout his life, was giving up himself, and I, I heard it said uh, one time, I thought it was so beautiful, that, you know, the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday, it's not... It's not just a one time that we that we commemorate Jesus Jesus' life. No, every single mass we commemorate the way that Jesus that we, we say, do this in memory of me in the mass. The priest says that every mass. And so throughout his life, and similarly, he was teaching, preaching, healing, um, and, and loving. And and this, um, the, the 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 mass of the Lord's Supper now has that love manifest in a much more obvious way, the washing of the feet and the Eucharist, but it's, it's his life, his whole life. Um, and, of course, even more so tomorrow with the passion and death. It's all connected. And so we sing the Ubi Caritas, which has uh, not just that refrain that we sang, but verses. And the verses that we'll sing, if you're keeping, along, uh, you're keeping track at home, are verses 1, 2, and 5 which are the original Ubi Caritas verses. The other two are added. Um, and so it says, The love of Christ joins us together. Let us rejoice in him. And in our love and care for all, now love God in return. The love of Christ joins us. So not only is his love a sacrifice that protects us from harm, that heals us, um, a sacrifice that saves us from our sins, but it joins us because why do we all, what do we also call the Eucharist? We call it communion, communion, coming together.
us gather. May all divisions cease and in their place be Christ the Lord. In their place, we, we let them go. We, we give of ourselves and in the, the place of those divisions and that strife is Christ who is unifying and bringing communion, bringing true communion to us. In our next song we say, Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And how revere this wondrous gift, so far surpassing hope or thought. God is so far surpassing us in that sense that he is love, right? In that sense that Peter says, I don't understand. God is so far surpassing even our thoughts and our hopes, which, which are limitless, theoretically. We're so limited in our understanding that we say, how can I love thee as I ought, Lord? In the third verse we say, oh, see upon the altar placed the victim of divinest love. Victim of love. Does that mean like killing them with kindness? No, uh, <laughs> not quite the same thing. A victim of love, meaning Jesus is the victim of the sacrifice that we make at Mass. Um, just like he replaces the Lamb, he's the Lamb of God. Um, but it also means he's the one doing the sacrifice. We say that he's, the, he's both the victim and the priest. He's, he's doing the sacrifice. He's the victim of love, of giving. That self-giving love, that caritas. And so in the second half of that verse, uh, we say... Well, let's, I'll say the whole third verse. O oh, see upon the altar placed the victim of divinest love. Let all the earth below adore and join with choirs of heaven above. It takes us right back to Palm Sunday when we say Hosanna and we join with the choirs of angels. Here too, let all the earth below adore. And it's, uh, it's related also to the Ubi Caritas, that last verse that we sang. May we one day behold your glory and see you face to face, rejoicing with the saints of God to sing eternal praise. This Mass, the Mass of the Lord's Supper and Jesus' sacrifice, unites us not only with those that we have division and strife with now on earth, but also with the saints, with our loved ones who've gone before us, with the angels. It unites the whole world in time and space. Um, and so we say, uh, so we, 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 we do a special thing on Holy Thursday also. Um, we sing the glory to God. We haven't sung it throughout all of Lent except for on a couple feast days. Um, we haven't sung the glory to God, but in Lent, on, but on Holy Thursday, we sing it. And then, of course, again on Easter with ringing lots of bells. And so again, the glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. That's something that the angels sang when they were announcing the birth of Jesus at Christmas. So again, singing with the angels. So sing this song with the angels. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all.